Swansea College of Art and Ewell St David's Day Awards and Lecture. Gobrai a darlith lynyddol, cole celf a bertawe. This is the English version of the film. Mana un Cymraeg ar gael hefyd. Prym da'ch i gyd, ach roi sycynys iawn i darlith dydd gwldewi yma yn Brifysgol Cymru a Drindod Dewi Sant. Yn y ffodus, unwaith eto, achos y pandemig hyn, rydym yn cwrdda ar lein. Ond, mae peth yn dechrau gwella, ac yn ei gyd yn edrych ymlaen am flwydd nesaf i fod yn yr un ystafell gyda'r engilydd. Rwy'n ddiolchgar iawn i gwen bain yn ei ffym a criw Cymraeg yn yr adran, sut i'w hôl yr holl drefniadau hyn. Rwy yn gwerthwyrogi dechwaith ei gyd. Rwy'n mor bles heddi i gyflwyno mainer a mari mythaeus. Mam a'i merch a'r ddwy ohonon a perthynas gyda'r brifysgol. A'r ddwy ohonon yn cyn myfyrwyr. Mainer wedi ystydio celf a mari ar ein cwrs perfformio. Rwy'n edrych ymlaen nawr i glywed o ddiwrth mainer a mari. Cyn hynny, Ond yn gyfaill, Jonathan Pew yn mynd i roi tam y bach o gefnder chi gyda diolch o galon i mainer a mari ac i phob un o chi sydd ar lain heddi, diolch chi ddatlu dydd goldewi. Diolch am awr. Hello. Another year gone and another annual St David's Day lecture in association with the Swansea College of Art. University of Wales, Trinity St. David. This year's guests are Maynard and Mary Matthias, both artists working in exciting collaborative formats in art and music. As these two artists stamp a confident step forward over the postmodern footprints that extend through past and present, they explore a re-imaged reminder of identity, tradition, and strong inspirational female artists. If you look for Mary Matthias on streaming platforms, her excellent Rebel single is described as alternative folk, which I consider to be a fantastic description of a nation confidently redefining itself despite shifting traditions and digital homogenization. John Cage once said, value judgments are destructive to our proper business, which is curiosity and awareness. Be curious, be aware, and enjoy this inspirational insight into the work of Maynard and Mary Matthias. Moynhauch. Hello, my name is Maynard Matthias. My name is Mary Matthias. Uh, we're here today to discuss our careers. We are a mother and daughter working in the creative scene in Wales. Um, and we'll sort of discuss our career and working th bilingually um, through the medium both Welsh and English through our careers. But before we go on, I would like to just take this moment to congratulate you, staff and members who have received the St David's Day Awards. So a huge congratulations to you um, and for your contribution to Welsh language and culture. So, um, I'll start then, Mary. Um, so I'm an artist, um, primarily I'm a painter and printmaker, and I work with themes to do with Welsh culture, history, um, people, land, community, and um, the work is inspired by sort of Welsh history, um, and it has a sort of contemporary twist to it in the work. So a sort of fresh perspective, really, on kind of Welsh identity. Um, is how I, how I sort of explain it very briefly. Um, so Marley, um, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, so um, yeah, my name's Marley Matthias and um, I'm a musician and um, my music is also kind of inspired by um, traditional music but also having a modern twist on it. I use um, quite traditional melodies and traditional songs and um, make it in my own, uh, to my own style with my band. Um, I'm based in Cardiff now with my band and um, we're releasing an album based on um, tradition, heritage, the Welsh language, um, landscape and um, yeah so we're using folk music but putting a little um, contemporary edge onto the music and yeah we've got a lot of cool projects on the go. Great so um I started my career, I'll go right back to the beginning, and I myself was a student 
um, with the University of Wales, Trinity St. David's, and I studied in Carmarthen, um, and I did a degree in fine art, and I did the degree bilingually, well, through the medium of Welsh, really. Um, I was really, really lucky at the time because um, there were tutors there that could facilitate that. So we had artists as tutors who were also working in the Welsh scene. Um, so Ewan Bala, Gwenllian Bainon, Peter Finnamon, Brian Thomas were my tutors at the time. And they really helped me to sort of um, give the opportunity to not just work through the medium of Welsh, but to discuss themes to do with Welshness, to do with identity and culture and so on. So it was really nice to have that opportunity to be able to work in my mother tongue, so to speak, and, um, and develop confidence in working bilingually. Because even though I wasn't, uh, I was a Welsh speaker, my confidence in writing Welsh was, you know, wasn't great because I, and most of my education until that point had actually been through the medium of English. Um, so it was, it was a real eye opener to work through the medium of Welsh and to sort of develop that confidence, which I think really helped going forwards and creating those links um, in the industry and going forward working as an artist. Um, so Mavi, you as well, you, you studied in, uh, with the university, didn't you? Yeah, so I studied um, um, performing arts in Cardiff with um, Trinity St David. Um, but before that I started you know, um, learning guitar and um, made my own band when I was 14 called Raftam, um, where we did write in Welsh and English, but primarily uh, Welsh language um, music. And then, yeah, I went to um, study performing arts through the medium of Welsh, um, which was quite new to me. Um, so musical theatre is usually um, what I listen to in English. So doing that through Welsh was quite um, uh, exciting and interesting. Um, I made connections, new connections in Cardiff with um, people in the English um, scene, but also in the Welsh scene as well. And, opened up a lot of doors for me and um, I think working uh, bilingually was something new to me and um, being able to develop that was quite exciting um, and I'm in the scene now in Cardiff just working in, the, in bilingually. Great, yeah. So moving on from um, the university, the links the connections that I created whilst doing my degree um, from showing work but connecting with other artists from around Wales and galleries and so on was really, really important. When I left university, I actually went on to do um, teacher's training um, and I did so then through the medium of Welsh. And so I went on to work as a, an art teacher in secondary schools, um, working with both Welsh and bilingual schools. So again, that the skills and the confidence that I'd kind of grown working creatively through the medium of Welsh really fed into that and also gave me the job opportunities because of course they were looking for, you know, tutors, um, sorry, uh, teachers that were able to speak and teach through the medium of Welsh. So of course I was able to apply that degree directly straight into um, um, the work situation then. Um, during the time I was a teacher, I also worked on projects, um, worked on sort of freelance projects myself, and so I continued working as an artist and again, a lot of the connections that, that I had made earlier really came into play. So, you know, I did projects with um, theatre companies, Theatre uh, Vennefach, Theatre Arad Gorch. Um, I did some work for SBC, um, commission work. Um, I did a lot of mural work for, for, for different, um, different organisations. Um, and again, I feel like these connections to these people were made during you know, those are really important um, years of my degree, really. Um, 
And of course, that's how it works. So the world, so the community in Wales is quite small, um, in a way. So, if, so if you're, for example, a creative, and you think, right, I need to find another painter or another sculptor that 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 works through the Medium of Ashes project, you think back to those years where you made those connections, and you know, and you give that person a call and ask them to work on a project with you and and you know this sort of cross collaboration throughout Wales and those connections that are made um, you know during during those early years are really really important I think um, and I think Mary you, you you could probably say the same thing with the connections you've yeah. made through your degree I think this the same with music as well cross collaboration is really important and um, I think even in the Welsh music scene um, everyone helps each other out, you know, um, if there's a band that hasn't got a bass player then somebody out there, um, we know each other, we all help each other out and um, yeah, I think the collaboration side of music is really important uh, in the Welsh scene and um, it's such a close community and it's growing and growing every day which is really exciting and you know, we see Welsh bands travelling across to different countries and you know, sharing the language and that Welsh music is cool and it is modern and it's um, starting to develop more and more and I think that's really exciting. Um, yeah. Yeah, so so that's great. Um, so I'm going back now to the time when I was an art teacher. I'll go on and, and I worked on, like I said, lots of different projects. Um, I left teaching for a period of time and during that time I was working on lots of exciting projects. Um, I worked for Theatre Bell in Bach, I did, I did set, sort of set design for the National um, Eisteddfod and lots of things um, in between. Before I then went on to work as um, a Welsh language uh, art and design tutor in Carmarthen in the Pan School of Art. So the job role, interestingly, when that came up and, it, and, and you had to be fluent in Welsh, you were going to be you know, working and engaging with, with um, Welsh um, students. Oh, a little bit of my old self was a little bit apprehensive, thinking I'm not sure if my language skills are good enough, but the confidence that I did grow throughout uh, the degree and doing my degree through the medium of Welsh, I think really came into play then. And I spoke to one of my former tutors, and she said, "Just go for the go for the job." And of course, I then I did, and I got it, and I worked there for a good six, seven years as um, an art tutor, doing some fantastic projects with the students. Again, cr cross collaboration between um, that art school and uh, and Swansea School of Art and Cairns School of Art. We did lots of exciting projects together, and um, and sort of feeding feeding into the whole bilingual um, education in the art school was really, really exciting as well. And being able to sort of pass on those skills to students was really, really beneficial. So um, I've now left um, full, uh, my full-time job and I'm now a full-time um, artist and I'm working um, from my studio primarily as an artist, working on lots of really exciting projects at the moment. Again, these uh, many of them are um, sort of bilingual projects. Some I've had some work um, lately as well outside of Wales with BBC and some Netflix um, work uh, as an artist. Um, but um, I'm also working really in the Welsh scene as well. So I'm working on a project with Mena Elvin. Um, who is a Welsh poet, a very, very famous Welsh poet, and she's been writing a series of poems, and um, I've been producing work in response to these poems, which will be um, a part of the book, a part of the publication that's going to be released very soon in the next a couple of weeks, um, and the artworks for the front of the book as well. So the artwork for the front of the book, um, a, a painting that, that I was commissioned to do was of Katrin Glyndwr and she was the daughter of Owain Glyndwr, um, the Welsh rebel and um, 
yeah, it's really important, I think, to show Welsh female figures from history. Um, and I think this is something that Men Elvin um, found really important as well, and why she chose to have her on the front page of the book. So in the painting, you can see she has her hair down, although we, I had to research historical references, and, the, and during those times, many of them wore their hair back, but the decision was made to actually have her hair down um, to show the sort of a rebellious streak in her. Um, and you can see the emblem of Oing the Door in, in the clothing and so on. Um, so that's just one example of, of a project I've been working on lately. Um, I'll go on a little bit more and then Mali can explain about what she's been doing as well. Um, so I've also um, been working on a series of exhibitions which are going to come out um, later this year. Um, so I've got a solo show in Oriel Plas Clinton Weather in North Wales. Um, and I'll have a show, solo show with um, Gallery Fina Park as well in Wales. And I've also um, uh, tied up with a couple of projects. One um, where, where um, a small group of artists were showing work in London and um, we're doing a cross-collaborative piece that's going to sort of tour as well, but that, that's to come. Um, so all in all, very exciting time that I think really feeds in and has fed into my work is this idea of working in the Welsh community and beyond, but being able to work bilingually, speak to other creatives, other organisations, cross-collaboration, all of this feeds in to um, my career really and it's a really integral part of it. Um, Mari, I will let you talk now for a little <laughs> bit so you could do tips. <laughs> you can go on and tell us about your experience of, of going through a bilingual degree and how that's fed into your career. Yeah, so um, I did the degree in performing arts and um, I then went on to study a master's in production and um, songwriting and I think that was a different side to music where I was new to me and I think that opened doors for me as well. Um, so through that I started producing my own music and um, I got my first commissioned job to write a soundtrack for a, a theatre show um, in Blackwood Miners Institute with um, scriptwriter Christopher Harris. That project is still ongoing and very exciting. It's with Blackwood Miners Institute, and um, yeah, that's a future project for the years coming. And I've also been writing my own show, so this album is merged into my own show, which will be launched in the National Steadvod this year in Tregaron, and um, the songs will be in between scenes. Um, yeah, it's been amazing to be able to um, do all these creative stuff in um, through the Welsh language and communicating with a variety of people. And um, I feel through the creative arts, through my um, studies, I've connected with so many different people. Um, and yeah, so... Um, Would you like to maybe discuss one of the songs from the album and its content maybe let us hear? Here, one of them yeah. as a preview. <laughs> yeah, a sneak peek. So um, this album, like I said, is reflecting on some folk stories, but also it's called Anon because that um, means the other world in Welsh mythology. We hear it in the Red Book of Hergest and the White Book of Rhyddarch and the Mabinogion. Um, Anon, the other world, is um, reflecting on heritage and communities from years ago. And um, this song, Anon, is using um, folk melodies, traditional folk melodies, but putting a contemporary twist onto them with electronic sounds. Um, and so, yeah, here's a sample of that song, which is called Anon. Lovely to hear um, 
the song, the song and um, Maddie, can you tell us a little bit about the sort of collaboration that goes into um, creating a single and you know, the other musicians and how, how you're connected in, in the Welsh music scene? Um, so since starting, um, I got picked for 40 Project and through that I um, collaborated with a lot of different people and also through my master's degree doing um, cross collaborations online and production. Um, and so that builded my confidence with collaborating with other musicians and um, I started my band when I was 14 so that I started that um, kind of practice of collaborating with other musicians then and um, yeah so when I started meeting new musicians in Cardiff I was um, jamming with them and sessions where we just wrote and worked on my original pieces. Yeah, I think it's brilliant to have loads of musicians in one room again and where you can just um, collaborate and, you know, tune into each other and the instruments and, um, yeah, in the studio it was great to hear all the different um, aspects of the songs come together and how all the instruments added layers onto the tracks and um, we're kind of reflecting that sound onto a live, um, on a live scale as well, so, yeah. Mary, um, I've noticed, you know, in the last couple of years, a real um, sort of explosion of creative talent um, for, so through, you know, young bilingual um, musicians. And, you know, there's a lot of new bands and musicians out there who are um, singing in Welsh and, and bringing bilingual elements into their work, even from non Welsh speaking families. You know the Welsh language is playing more of a role in in the in the music scene, not just in Wales but beyond as well. Have, have you noticed that? Oh, definitely. I've I've noticed that a lot of English bands are starting to introduce Welsh language into their songs, and also Welsh language bands and musicians are again played on Radio One, and I think that's a massive step for Welsh language music, and also international festivals that are interested in having Welsh musicians and bands play in, in the festivals and um, that represent our country and our language and I think that's incredibly important and festivals like Celtic Connections that introduce um, music from Brittany, Scotland, Ireland, Wales and um, minority languages that are, are being heard and I think it's amazing really yeah it's great you know it's the 90s um, you know coined that term like cool cumbria didn't it but i think now it's really sort of establishing as something that is pretty cool to be able to um not just speak um, bilingually but to work bilingually and and to have like you know these such creative um outputs um that are coming out and being bilingual, isn't it? You know, yeah. in, in the creative fields, it's it's really fantastic. And um, um, I, you know, I definitely think, you know, in, in the art scene as well. It's um, even if you're working as a visual artist like myself, you know, language is not necessarily seen in the artworks because it's it's, it's visual and um, um, you know a, a depiction of scenes and so on. But I think working bilingually allows you to connect to other artists across Wales um, and it gives it gives it another dimension that, that you are able to infil infiltrate you know different um, groups of people and um, collaborate to create some really exciting work. Um, I think um, when I'm writing music as well, when I write in English and write in Welsh, um, there's a different um, notion towards every lang language, it has a different meaning, a different, you know, what language uh, with it comes community and with it comes heritage and, and history. So I think when I do write in Welsh, I do have that bond with that sense to it and also natural day to day. I do switch from Welsh to English quite naturally and so I think when I bring that into my music, it's sort of 
a natural way of speaking and reflects on our community today, switching yeah. between the languages. Yeah, that's, you know, it is um, quite an interesting concept and I'd read uh, recently a review somebody done, had done of your single that you've just released of uh, Rebel um, and it was somebody from, that was based in Italy I believe and, um, and they wrote an interesting article and, and sort of spoke about how they sort of collect you know, music from around the world and they just loved the sound of, of the Welsh language and they loved the single because they loved the, the sort of melodic way that the words were strung together and so yeah. on and um, it sort of got a radio play in America and so on and so s sometimes you know just the sound of it you know can really add something to music can't it? Definitely well, even though that person didn't understand the Welsh language they um, they kind of heard through the, the melodies and through the instrumentation that it was a sort of a powerful kind of protesty song that connects with the story of the Merchabeca Rebecca riots, which is uh, inspired by your piece of work as well. So I think the music speaks a lot of languages as well. Yeah. Um, so the Merchabeca, just to explain, I did a project um, right to the start of the the first lockdown, and I did a solo show based on um, the Mechebeka, the Rebecca rioters. So I sort of took inspiration from stories told by, you know, a, a local people who have got sort of, um, um, you know, family members, um, old family members that were a part of the Rebecca riots, uh, which were, you know, the groups of men um, from real, you know, rural parts of Wales who um, protested get to the toll gates and they, they dressed up in women's clothing. So, you know, I, I, I sort of had a play on that, I used them as a symbol of Welsh protest and symbol of, of you know, the rights of um, the folk people of Pobol Gwerin, Cymraeg. And, um, and that, that has really sort of developed uh, from there. Um, yeah, so, Mary, I think maybe if I ask you a couple of questions, yeah. Um, um, as we we haven't got a live live audience right in front of us here, so maybe I'll ask a couple of questions and um, we'll go from there. Is there anybody or anything that really inspired you? You know, any other artists, musicians that inspired your um, way of working and your style? Um, well, when I was little, I listened to a variety of music, and you know, I. I'd did piano and violin, so I listened to classical music, but I also listened to a variety of uh, pop music and traditional music, and um, I, I think that sort of came out in my writing at the time, bringing in all these genres, but um, recently I think folk music and traditional music has really connected with me, and I think especially over lockdown, you know, when um, the prices of houses have gone up and, you know, a lot of protests with the Welsh language, and I think a lot to do with um, my culture and heritage lives within folk music and um, so bands like Fern Hill and Carlan where they take something traditional and turn it into something quite modern and give it their own twist I think they've been really inspiring for me and I've listened to a lot of their music recently and um, reflecting on their ideas and musical elements of using traditional instruments but also giving it a bit of a um, contemporary sound as well, which has been a big part of my album as well, bringing in electronic soundscapes and that soundtrack feel to it as well. Hmm. Um, shall I ask you some questions? Yes. Um, so, what uh, kind of um, inspired you to paint in your style? Or, uh, or who inspired to you in your style of painting? And um. Well, you know, I am, you know, I am, I do work as a painter, printmaker, so I am really interested in um, sort of, you know, quite powerful female artists throughout history who have managed to sort of voice their ideas through paintings. Um, you know, the obvious, such as, you know, Paula Rigo or Frida Kahlo, you know, quite big figures when I was, you know, trained to be uh, an artist, so to speak. Um, and you know a lot of contemporary Welsh artists are also inspiring and they are my contemporaries so I think you know working and bouncing ideas off of other people in your own generation it, it's um, 
it's something that, that keeps perspective sort of fresh in the work as well. Um, you know, I am inspired by people and stories and connections. They have connections to the land, connections to, you know, Welsh um, heritage and, and things. And I think that is really the main thing that feeds into my work. Amazing. Yeah, I think, you know, people and communities and stuff inspire me as well and also because I studied acting in my degree I also um, yeah the intrigue I've been intrigued with people and their stories and the communities and um, and I think that is kind of intertwined in everything I do as well so some a lot of the projects um, that both me and Mari have been involved in really are underpinned um, by this bilingualism, you know, sort of world that we live in. So um, looking at all the projects that both myself and Mari have been involved in, I think one important thing um, to sort of say is that the, the bilingual element and working through the medium of Welsh has, you know, really um, been a, an important aspect of our careers and the opportunities, the projects that we've been involved in, whether it's through, um, you know, the media, SVC, Electric Cymru, um, the talks, you know, for myself associated with my artworks and the themes that of Welsh culture and history and all, all these things tying together and, and I think just working through the medium of Welsh is, is natural for us now. Um, Yes, we're lucky that we speak Welsh as a first language, um, but Mary, you know, um, there are lots of, of my contemporaries, my friends who perhaps didn't have Welsh in their home life, but decided to engage with it and are actually, you know, working and, and um, are a part of the Welsh scene and um, I've had to work for it, but are a really, really integral part of the Welsh scene now, you know, in both, yeah. in both the art scene and the music scene. I've noticed a lot of people are just really appreciating the fact we have this um, connection to this old Celtic language and I think everyone feels privileged to have that, so I think it's important to intertwine that language into our daily lives and also our careers as well. Well, um, I'd like to say thank you very much for listening. Um, it's been a real honour to um, speak to you, um, and um, and I'm glad. Uh, I'm glad, and I hope that you've enjoyed listening. Um, and uh, you know, one piece of advice I'd give to you if you are thinking about um, developing your bilingual skills, and you know, maybe taking your Welsh language skills further into your careers or, or studying certain modules through the medium of Welsh, my advice would be to just um, do it and give it a try and not worry too much about, you know, um, the standard of your Welsh and I know that's a controversial thing to say but what I mean by that is some people are maybe put off and, and feel like they're not um, good enough or their language skills aren't good enough to do a module through the medium of Welsh but what I would say is give it a go and there is support available I know the support available out there um, and through the university to help you study modules through the medium of Welsh and I think you know when you do then graduate and you're able to sort of go for projects or go for work opportunities and to say that you know this is what I did in my degree and I, and I, and I actively engaged um, with bilingual, bilingual or Welsh modules, I think that really, really helps. It will open up a lot of opportunities and connections in the industry and I think, yeah, don't be scared to use the language in any means of your work or projects and actually make sure that you maybe use it because I think that it will open doors in the industry and you will realise that there's just so many opportunities and connections through that. Yeah. Great, Josh Borial Nichiam Granda, um a public Nichiam and Bodal. Yeah, thank you. And there you go, another year done. Thank you to everybody that was involved. 
um, particularly to our special guests, Rainer and Mary Matthias. Thank you to Gwen Bainon, Colin Kelv Abertower, Privasco Cymru, Arjun Do Dewi Sant, um, and we hope to see you all next year. Gnoch a pethau bachain. And finally, to close, we would like to congratulate all the staff and students that have won the annual St David's Day Awards for their contribution to the Welsh language. This was undertaken in a live event this year, but was recorded and will be available on YouTube at a later date. Felly llongyfarchiadau gwrysog i chi gyd.